scales throughout the game very, very well. Even if you get a hold of a Drow Ranger and an impressive right click, you can utilize that back against her. So I'm always a big fan of Sea Shadow Demon. I'm just looking for the Kunkka. I yeah. think that could be their last Ooh. pick. No, I was actually just about to say that Linux Conspiracy is, is like so heavy on dual roaming that uh, I actually thought that, like there was a, still a possibility that Leshrac would be run as a four position with a Shadow Demon, but that's also kind of you know, questionable. I, I think that might actually be it, because you don't run Shadow Demon and Spirit Breaker as two supports, right? It's a carry bench, I think is actually... Man, this, the, this draft actually this draft got really weird really fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it did. <laughs> okay, so let's see. It has to be Shadow Demon, Lishrak, support duo with yeah. Lycan safely, and I really don't think you run Shadow Demon, Spirit Breaker. They have bad synergy, just yeah. flat out, yeah. I would say. I mean, if you time it really well so that the charge lands right after Disruption ends or something, I think the charge still goes on. Like, that's that's not the play. Um, <laughs> and yeah, the and, other... and they had Skanks playing the... Um, they had Skanks playing the... Um, Leshrac, which means he's the four position, yeah. so more credence to that. And then for Hellraisers, you said Corvenge? I think it's a Core Dazzle, actually. It's a Core Dazzle? Yeah. Ooh. I think that's what they're going to do. They want to get the weave up really fast, they want to get their sustain up really fast with Shadow Wave, and then they're just looking to push the so what do you He's do? also a mech carrier. If Chen doesn't get it, it depends. And he's a really good one versus one in mid, right? That's where you put him? Safe lane. He beats Safe pretty much every okay. offlane and just poison touch and you just hit Yeah, him. he's incredibly good in one versus one scenarios. It's just the question of whether or not he can go into the mid game and actually be fully capable. But in a fast kind of oriented push lineup, the idea of just valuing your dis your sustain so much, I guess, would actually make it successful up until like, what, you would say like 30, 35 minutes, you start falling off pretty hard. Yeah. Do you think it's uh, do you think um, it's Venge still? Core? I'm not sure. I think we're not they, seeing it yet. If they put Dazzle mid, I think Spearbreaker's going to own it. No, I don't think they put Dazzle mid. I think if they, they play core... But Dazzle, Dazzle bottom versus Spearbreaker, I also don't think is that good because Spearbreaker has a ton of armor. I don't really think he's going to get harassed out that well. So I don't, can Venge do that then? I, mm, I think Venge scales better with farm, um, but Dazzle scales better with levels. Like It's yeah. more important for him to get levels. Okay. More I, so I, it's well, strange. <laughs> it's about yeah. the timing. Everyone's puzzled. We can get our it's answer. It's a mid-chen. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty sick. We can find out in just a few seconds, gentlemen, as the game gets underway, and then we won't have to wonder any longer. So why don't we go ahead and just hop into the game number one? And you got to remember, very important matchup for the Hellraisers. Right, right into that pause. That but maybe with everyone getting assigned to their roles, I mean, given they could still make some swaps, maybe that gives a bit more information. But okay, here we go. Game going to be back underway. Hellraisers, they need to get both wins to stay alive. Just one is not going to be enough. London Conspiracy had a good, strong start, 2 owing Navi. Then they drop two games so if they can string together a couple of wins they're still going to be in a good spot if they get two wins here they're in a very good spot so with that said gentlemen please take it away it's going to be Cinderin and Merlini bringing you the cast we'll see you at the conclusion of the series thank you very much yeah this is you were right Ben it looks like it is going to be a poor venge it is played by Artis who is the uh, the carry for Hellraisers so they will be playing Dazzle as support by Goritz Chen rotating up as well it's going to be played by Gotham we've got Afo Ninja playing as the Drow Ranger, and of course, finally, that leaves Dread playing as the Clockwork. Again, for London Conspiracy on the other side, SSA Spartan will be looking for the top rune as Shadow Demon. We've got S224J, I think Cap called him Skanks, will be playing as the Leshrac. Madara onto the Queen of Pain. Kaiser on Lycan, and finally Spirit Breaker so the, like, Skylark. The Lycan pick came, I would say, within five seconds after the Chen pick. Yeah. So, uh, they had their heart set on Lycan, it seems like, but wouldn't you be taken immediately aback by the Venge pick if you were in their shoes and been like, oh, sorry, by the Chen pick and be like, okay, well, they're running a core Venge or a core Dazzle in the safe lane. Shouldn't we really reevaluate our picks? Do you I think, think it matters that much? I think they just wanted someone who can run down the Drow through mm -hmm. all of the defensive abilities. But why not, let's say, like Bristleback instead or something like that? Mm, I'm not sure Bristle would have been better. He doesn't... He suffers pretty much against Weave, mm -hmm. and if he if you get also the Cogs counter him very well. You could say the same for Lycan, but he has an easier time working around them with his high movement speed. And when he gets in on Drow, I feel like he's a lot deadlier than Bristle, who needs to build his damage up over the fight. And mm -hmm. you, again, that just speaks to HR's strength. I mean, even even just not Bristle, even just like I mean, there there has to be a lot of other options that they could have. I, I mean, I, it definitely threw me off that they 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 picked Chen last. And, I mean, Lycan's a really good early game hero. He has really good uh, lane control. He can help out his other lanes with Hal. So it's, it's definitely a good pick here. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's definitely solid. It's also um, 
a favored pick for LC, I believe. I seem to remember that yesterday against Navi it got banned it, once, if not twice, by Navi. So uh, LC definitely have been running that in the past. LC, it's not really a, a, a trendy pick right now. So if you ban that against a team, it, it goes to show that they've definitely had a couple of strategies with it. Uh, or I could just be remembering completely wrong, but I, I feel like I've seen it. So. Dazzle really needs a TP. I, I think the the most vulnerable hero in this is Drow Ranger easily. And if if she charges, like Queen of Pain's already like a pretty good matchup versus Drow, I think. And if she dies like one or two times, it's it's going to be awful for the Drow Ranger all game, and that really just limits their entire strategy. So, uh, with they do have an Observer War down there to see if there is a charge coming. Like Chen may be able to save her as well, but usually you see them try and fast farm a really fast mech. We also saw the offlaner Dread. He bought a TP scroll at the very start of the game to get that Observer War down safely. And I think that's an interesting play that we don't see often enough. Yeah, he's getting a lot of value out of that right now. I, I don't even know if they have a Sentry War to counter it at this point in time. Dread is at least... seems to be playing really aggressively or at least getting a lot of it no no sentries so that is indeed very valuable easily worth it to to spend 100 gold in a tp for just keeping a ward up for even just a few minutes say to get countered later on so what's the laning status right now lycan and bench both farming well oh charge actually onto god he gets a 17 percent there but not gonna follow through after that and the rune will go chen's way Two minutes in here as Drow. You said Drow versus Quap. I feel like I've seen this matchup a couple of times, and generally it doesn't seem like Drow or uh, Quap has the upper hand. Because when, when you want to go in and cast Shadow Strike, you just gust and hit her. Yes, but I think at the in the later phases, like in the four minutes onwards, when you can't really right-click that much, and you're much more scared of ganks, I think Quap has a lot more kill potential on the Drow Ranger. Um, and especially oh, with Ben's good board. disruption, they can follow it through with a slow. Oh, they missed the combo. Very unusual misplay from LC, who yesterday were out of control with their roaming combo with Shadow Demon Kunkka as well as the Invoker Sunstrike. But this time around, they do not manage to land it. Dread will get stunned up here this time. Soul Catcher as well. He does have the cogs well placed, and this is gonna end that fight as mid. What the? First blood for the Drow against nice. the Quap. That is that's really the start you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, that's really huge for Drow Ranger. And, I mean, Qu Queen of Pain's supposed to be, like, the dominator here. And she's their main source of AoE since Lestrak is a support. So keeping her down, especially without any sort of rotation, I'm not sure if there was, like, a Seder. I saw the Seder creep running around earlier. I don't know if it spanned out a couple of Shockwaves, but Queen of Pain dying in that matchup is terrible for London Conspiracy. She's going to show up in the lane once again with a blink, missing the scream on the on the Drow, and already using 150 mana for basically nothing, which is not the end of the world for her, but it is, of course, going to be an important resource. When you're playing from behind in the mid lane, sometimes you're just going to have to resort to spamming out lanes a little bit with your spells, and at least that's one thing Quap is going for, almost regardless of how many times she dies in this lane. She will be getting the runes, Yeah, and maybe that can set her up for a comeback as... Shadow Demon's looking for the rotation, not really sure what the idea was here for Spartan, just basically giving information to HR for no reason, showing himself in the mid lane. Yeah, it's the early game, definitely not what Elsie expected. This should have been... Uh, the, the Observer Ward on top definitely helped. They even have a Sentry to kill London Conspiracy, the Observer Ward in the top lanes, so, and they missed a kill on Dread. so Dread has three things going his way in the top. Madara dying in the mid lane is just just horrendous, because Drow Ranger's gonna get... Uh, level 6 even quicker, which will make the bottom lane much more tough for the Spirit Breaker. And the scary thing for LC is that they're not even contesting the Chen. So, economy-wise, it's also a win for the Radiant as Gotham is almost going to be level 4 by now. Not sure if they managed to set up any stacks for him Those for this Wild Wing, apart from that was, one. Alright, yeah. they haven't stacked that one. They're basically just pulling that. He's looking to make a another one here. I think that was good pull timing on the Wolves, so it should be a double. Yep, it is indeed. I think they need more smokes on... I, I think... They gotta do something. Yeah, mid and top, they're supposed to be always always scared of SD Lash, but as we saw, like, Dread is playing pretty far up. He was even contesting, like, the pool camp at some point. Drow Ranger is getting a ton of farm, highest level in the game uh, right now. And as you said, they have a Chen. So it's pretty much, like, 2v4 in the top and the mid combined, and LC is losing both of those, which is quite the surprise. 
Yeah, they at least managed to keep Clock pretty low level, even with Dread's ward. We saw him only being level one when he got chased down at the top rune. But yeah, but he's keeping the supports there. But yeah, he's keeping them busy, and that's that's a win in itself. When you're playing against Shadow Demon Lesh, if you don't die in the offlane by minute six, you're generally doing something right unless you're level one. And he's got 10 to CS, actually, on the clock, so that's that's pretty damn good Chen for Dread. setting up for a move level to four. the mid. So, yeah, they can kill him, but they have Observer Ward. It's going to pop if he comes to the wrong side. Oh, checking the top rune. Scholar's going to find the bottom rune as well. That's a regen. Are they thinking about the charge play? Oh, he's going to find Gotham, actually. He's just going to go to town. Never mind. <laughs> We're going to take this fight. I think Spirit Breaker wins that engagement, but I guess he's scared of the rotation which he had. Very good reason to be. Dazzle was coming in from below. Yeah, and let's that. let's look at this in isolation. How good do you think... So this is a kind of lineup we haven't seen very often. How good do you think Venge core is with Drow Aura? Because... I think really good if you want to end the game early. I think they're looking to end the game, or at least take Roshan, uh, you know, before 15 minutes. So you can also tell by his build with the Ring of Basilius that he just wants to push down towers very, very early on. Charge onto FNNJ, but he is already farming that small camp there. And I mean, he already has 929 no HP. I think he's going uh, Arteezy's build with no Frost Arrows. I, I don't know if it's his build, but he does it quite often. Yeah. It looks like the kind of game in which Frost Towers are actually almost useless. Um, they're looking to Brute Force Towers. He's not really able to hunt down, like, slow. Doesn't matter against the Lycan. They're going to land the combo on Dread up here. Good damage coming out from Skanks as well as Spartan, but will it be enough? He might actually be able to make it out of this. Wow. And he magic the right before. Health. That was so good. And that's two towers about to fall. Spear Breaker offers nothing. To, I mean, you can charge in, but you're just going to get melted. And what damage is Ventral Spirit sitting at this early into the game? Jimmy? She's hitting for 150 or something. Yeah, 142 right now. And that's only with a level 2 Command Aura. It's actually taken, or Vengeance Aura rather. Here's the TP support coming in, but they've already taken down Skylark before it starts. Spartan as well has to self-disrupt as a desperate measure here, but it's not going to be enough. Maybe it is, actually. Wave of Terror won't kill him off. Arts will try to TP out. He will also make it out on no HP, just like Clockwork a moment ago. And when the dust settles, it's going to be a two for two, which I think if you're HR, you're okay with this. You've got two towers. Yeah. You force a rotation. Drow's, Drow's, ult, like ult. Drow's going to take mid. Yeah, that's... That's definitely good for them. It looks like it went for LC with 400 gold gain there, but... They needed a TP earlier, I feel like. Like, Spearbreaker wanted to go in because he didn't want his tower to fall, and then he just died before the TPs came in. Uh, granted, they still got a couple of uh, good kills, but you don't want your towers to start falling this early, especially when those are the gateway to the Aegis. It's interesting to see the net worth distribution here. Bottom three are LC, and their two cores are still behind the two cores of the enemy team. So it's actually a pretty significant advantage HR are building here. And you have I've just got the feeling that the moment this mech comes up on Chen, which is only 800 gold away, I don't even know if LC have the burst. The way, that, the way I can see them taking a fight is that they isolate and kill the Chen instantly. And then they snowball it from there. Hand of God and mech is going to keep everyone else alive if they go for the, the team fight combo. And let's say they initiate on the Drow. I actually don't think they can kill it. They can't isolate the Chen, no. though. There's, there's, there's just no way. I mean, unless Chen's just horribly out of position. But his creeps will be in the front line, and then you have to worry about the clockwork. And oh, that's a good rocket. There is the potential play. He does have Hookshot up on Dread. This could be another big play for HR if they time it well. Kaiser actually super low. There's the Hookshot. He's going to get caught inside the cogs. And pardon me as my voice is cracking entirely, but Dread will kill him off. Rope still alive. They're going to get the Spirit Breaker as well. Lots of damage going the other way. Oh, Lightning Storm doing... HR with a big steal, and this just looks like it could be a very quick game. She's even going to try for the steal and fail. <laughs> Full team wipe. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's ambitious. you got to give it to him. That wasn't Do you think LC were that far behind that they go for that play? I mean, the it's actually, I don't think it's that high of a risk to go in there. It's like medium risk, medium reward, but I mean, if they really wanted to... I mean, they just lost one fight on bottom, right? That was, or lost two towers, and before that, it wasn't even that, that big of a deal. Like, usually when you see people go for that sort of roach play, they can take it quickly, or, like, HR's pushing top lane, and they know it's almost going to go uncontested. They might have the T1 on bottom, so they may feel a little bit more protected, but, I mean, was that worth it? To even try for it. I, I mean, obviously it wasn't worth it in the end, but, like, going into it, 
like you know a minute like 30 seconds before it happened are you going to make the call hey let's smoke in a roche and i don't think they can contest it in time i think they should have definitely tried to put some pressure on some lane and get some like spread out hr first so if they would have pushed top a bit with Lycan, and then they force a TP rotation, for example, and then he just ports down, and then they try Roche so they can win on numbers, that might have been the play. I would agree it was a little bit desperate at that point in time. They are, however, analyzing the situation correctly, that they were losing and needed to do something. And I mean, I They were losing by that it. badly. I mean, th it's not just how far behind they are on goal, it's just how far behind they are in the game plan. Like, their early game has fallen apart, and we're going to reach, like, HR's lineup hadn't even peaked yet. It's going to peak, let's say, minute 15 to 20. If you don't start getting something accomplished with your LC line, of that's I, I don't I don't see them like if they don't do that Roche what else do they do how do they get I think they stall pushes in? they stall pushes with like a lush rack spam and then they look for a good charge in with a big quap ultimate to start the fight and it then just seems really unlikely that they'll be able to pull that well, off with a okay let's say that if they, that doesn't work out then they can just split push with Lycan and then I mean they're not going to be able to push as fast but I mean I, I, I definitely agree that they were behind, and I definitely agree that they had to do something, but it, it just seems like it's it, it was way too desperate of a match, or way too obvious that in HR just read it completely. Very nice play from Dread, though, and I don't know, the SD Lush seems very, very weak. And I mean, I mean, support Lush doesn't even seem that strong anymore. No, I like him a lot more in core these days. Uh, teams have been successful running him as support, especially together with Shadow Demon, but it's just, it's a really volatile duo where it can go really well or really wrong. And in this game, it's the latter. They're going to go for the charge in on Arts. He still has the Aegis, though, as Dread gets a hook shot. Nice Sonic Wave going to clip three, if not even four there, but Spartan three shot by Afo Ninja. He's going to go on to the Spirit Breaker as well. Now the swap on Quap. They're getting completely run over, not even losing a single hero yet, not even losing a single hero in like the last seven or eight minutes. Skylark's gonna charge in, there's it the gust, it does stop it. And Lesh is gonna get blown up as it looks right now. Lycan trying to go and he can't even run into these heroes. He's just gonna get completely shut down if he tries, pokes a little bit onto Dread, but ultimately gonna have to run away as the damage is just way too overwhelming for HR. London Conspiracy, they're gonna have to, I don't know, at this point it almost looks like that was a good Sonic Wave. They had the Lightning Storms. Mm -hmm. They they got the charge got disrupted, but I think with Gus uh, cancelling that, it's very easy for Afro Ninja to see it coming and just stop it. I don't know if they can get a better fight than that. It wasn't even close. Like it wasn't even. They, I mean, they had the Weave slightest. up. They have all these like small synergy with the Drowar, the Venjara, the Alpha Wolf creep. Um, I mean, the Weave offensive. The, like none of these heroes can take like more than four hits, four or five hits from a Drow Ranger. Quap links in. Oh, there's a swap onto Spartan again and a storm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a Drow Ranger for you. Hook shot onto Lesh, and will be another easy kill going the way of HR. This no response. Is this is just game. Like 13 minutes. LC are like, let's get out of here. <laughs> Try to focus on game number two. HR are still contenders for the top two spots. Actually, I think it's only the second spot uh, that is that is available. And this is a good stat to see because. The unfortunate situation for HR is it's not enough that they win this game, but it's the only chance they have at having a shot at getting it, like a tiebreaker for second place. They have to win 2-0. Uh, it's a shame for them that, I mean, this kind of play, I don't, 